Welcome again, everyone. This is Tom with Inovia Consulting. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar on uh, Dimension Manager from Vertical Leap. Today we're joined by Bob Cole, and Bob's going to take us through the product. Uh, we do hope that this is an interactive session, so certainly as you have questions, you can put them in the chat window uh, down on your GoToWebinar screen, and I'll be happy to pass those along to Bob. And uh, Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, let me just close. I thought I closed this before, but it looks like uh, so we don't get interrupted with stuff. Okay, so Dimension Manager is something, in fact, it's the, the reason that I got involved with this company about seven years ago. Dimensions are a wonderful thing uh, and uh, are kind of unique in the uh, ERP world. They really have tremendous flexibility to be able to tag any data in any fashion you want and are extensively used for report generation, including financial reports, especially for financial reports. However, the problem is that most people who are posting transactions with, with uh, dimension tags don't really understand the importance and what happens if you do it incorrectly. And so the tags either are forgotten or they're not, uh, they're posted incorrectly, or in some cases, new users of NAV don't really understand the power of dimensions, and in six months come back to their NAV partner and say, well, we've just come up with five more uh, new dimension values. How do we assign these dimensions to our existing data? And the answer in NAV, of course, is, is you can't change anything after it's posted. The only thing that NAV allows you to do is to to uh, zero out the transaction and enter a new a new copy of it with the, with the proper ones. Well, if you have uh, thousands of transactions that you're posting, that's just not reasonable to expect someone to do. So we added the ability to add, modify, or delete any dimension value to any posted record or any group of posted records. So that's what we're going to take a look at is how do we do this and what safeguards do we have built in uh, in case you have mistakes or you want to prevent posting uh, in situations where it shouldn't be updated. And we'll talk about uh, situations where that, that uh, needs to be controlled. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into posted documents and I said this, this can be used on any document. I'm going to go to a posted sales invoice and we open up a posted sales invoice and view it and this is the way it's done on pretty much all posted documents is we navigate on the well first let's take a look and see what the dimensions on this are that were originally posted so we have four dimensions okay we've got area customer group department and salesperson. Now this is the NAV de demo database for NAV 2017 and in, uh, in the NAV demo databases, all of them, department and project are the two global uh, dimensions and uh, uh, I'm pr probably you all understand what global dimensions are. They're accessible from all, all tables on screen. But in this situation, the project uh, the project dimension was not added in. So we're going to go in and we're going to add in project to this posted document. So the first thing we do is go to navigate and naturally the function navigate is on the actions tab. You might think it's on the navigate tab but this is Microsoft so it's on the actions tab. So we navigate on the document and it shows when this document was originally posted, all of these entries were made in all of these different ledgers. So we've posted it as a, as a sales invoice. We have nine lines that were created in the GL entry table, the tax, and so on. When we make a change, everything that is in this window will be updated. So it's not just the posted sales invoice, but it'll also be the GL entry table and all of the other tables. Anything that, had, that was posted here and has dimensions will be updated. So we go to actions and we say change dimensions. 
it brings up a window and it says what dimension is it that you want to, you want to change and in this case I'm going to say I'm going to add the project dimension. Now if I picked a dimension that already had a value it would appear what the existing dimension was. Since project is not there there is no existing value for it. So now I do the drop down on the value and these are the, the values that have been set up in the nav demo database for project. So let's say that we're going to make this a Mercedes and when I click OK it's now done. So if I open up the GL entry table and I say show related entries, you'll see that the project code now has Mercedes in it, which it didn't have a minute ago. And let's verify this by hitting escape and going back to the original invoice. Go to actions. Uh, I'm sorry, go to, to let's go to, to uh, dimensions. And now you can see that project is on here. Now, very, very simple to use. We're going to go on on, on uh, batch, updating, uh, batch updating dimensions in just a second. But what happens if somebody comes down and says, wait a minute, you've made a mistake. You've updated the wrong document. Okay? So in this case, if that's, if that's what's happened, then we can go back in and we can go to uh, navigate and we go to actions and it says dimension management history. So if we open up dimension management history you'll see who changed what, what, what was done, it was a change, what, what document was changed, what the uh, new code was and the new value, the new dimension value and, and code, when it was done, who did it, and here we'll show all of the entries that were updated, both the old value, which was blank, and the new value, which was project equals Mercedes. So at this point, we have a function that says undo dimension change. Undo dimension change makes a reversing entry to put it back the way it was. So if we click on undo, it says this is going to be put it, put it back. We say yes, and it's done. Let's go back in and take a look at the GL entry table. We just saw that we had added that value in. Now it's gone. So we just took it back out. So whatever change you made, you can undo it by simply going into the document and and uh, show the, do the, uh, the, the uh, dimension management change uh, table screen and then click on undo. Now, this is fine because we can find this easily because we're still on this. What if this shows up after the fact? If we go into dimension management and uh, dimension manager, we can see that we have a history list of all of the changes that have been made the date they were made and who made them. So if you can identify the, the user ID and who made and when it was made, you can bring up a change, for example, there. We say view, and we have the undo change from a list of all changes that have been made. Okay? So you can either do it from the document itself by navigating on it, or you can go into a list of all changes that have been made by all users. So that's dealing with uh, document by document. Very simple to use, and all documents are the same. So credit memos, purchased invoices, whatever posted document you want to update, you can. But I mentioned in the beginning what happens if you have hundreds of documents that you want to update. So let's go into sales and marketing. You have you finally you decide that you want to add a new dimension value and you want to apply it to a hundred entries. So we go into order processing, and we bring up a list of sale of posted. Well, let's go into uh, posted documents. I'm sorry. Let's go to posted documents. And now what we want to do is filter this list. So we can filter, NAV will allow you to filter on any field. So let's filter on, for example, currency code 
equals euro. Currency code equals euro. I saw it just a second ago. Ah, it's EUR, that's why. EUR. Okay, so there's a list of all of the transactions, posted sales invoices, that have been that have a currency code of euro. And if we go to actions, we can see we can batch navigate change dimension. Now, we say batch navigate change dimension because there is another function when we get into the ledgers, which we'll take a look at, which will allow you to batch not navigate change. So uh, at, in a ledger entry, maybe you're going to bring up, especially in the GL entry table, where you're trying to clean up some, some uh, entries for your financial statements and you don't care about all of the other relational stuff that we showed when we navigate on a on an entry and you simply want to update update the GL entry and that's it so we can in that case which we'll look at in a second go into the GL entry table and simply update the the, the uh, ledger entry and not navigate so if we say batch navigate change dimensions we're going to update everything that is in this that is on screen so this filtered list so we go to batch navigate same thing. We take a look and see what the what the the uh, uh, the value is that we want to change. Let's say that um, we want to use area, and we're going to say Northern European. I'm not. Uh, they probably aren't all Northern European, but whatever. So we're going to change this to 40. And when we click OK, it's going to update all of these entries to have a uh, a, a code of 40. So let's take a look and we navigate on this. And what, let's uh, show related entries and dimensions and it's now 40. All of them will be 40. So you can go in and you can batch add, you can batch change. And same thing, if you navigate on the document, you can undo it and put it back the way it was. So if we go back in here and we go into uh, view, so let's navigate uh, on this, and we're going to take a look at the GL entries. We've added area code. Now, this is something else that we've done. In your version of NAV, you will not you will only see the two global dimensions department and project or whatever you've named them to be one of the things that we did in the GL entry table is add in all of the extended dimensions okay so you'll be able to see all of your dimensions when you when you have a dimension manager not just the department and project this is something that we added in order for people to be able to see what they are so in this case all of the entries were in fact updated to include uh, the the uh, uh, location code of, of dimension of 40. So all of these were updated at once. Okay, so we've looked at updating individual documents, and we've up batch updating documents. Now we could in fact go into, for example, a uh, customer ledger entry table. So let's go into departments and let's go into customers. Again, we have the ability to go in, filter this list and update the ledger entries for a, uh, for a whole filtered list as a batch. Or we can go into, let's see, let's find this one and view, and view this. We go into edit, cell and Gorian. And we have one. There we go. So there's the total. It's drillable. It's not drillable. Let's go. The balance is drillable. So there's the balance, and we can go to actions, and we can either change a single dimension, change just the, the, uh, the, the dimensions for the invoice or batch change 
all of these. Now, if we batch navigate on here, it's again ask us for the new, the new dimension and the value, and it will update it. If we go into the list, let's filter this list on location code equals yellow. And if we now from here, uh, let's go to, we want to batch change dimensions. It's going to ask us for a start and end date. So not only can we update the dimension to a new value, but we can also say we only want to update a, a, a posting date range of from this date to this date. So only the entries that are that have been have a posting date of, of this date to this date will be updated. So this gives you control of even within a list you can control by the posting date. Now that brings up an interesting question and uh, I brought it up before and that is how do we control a situation where <coughs> excuse me where a company might want to prevent people from updating their uh, their financial statements because they've been published and if the company is a public company it's kind of frowned on to change your change your financial statements after you've issued your 10ks or 10qs and so you need to be able to make sure that that can't happen so we've gone into uh, the uh, we have a couple ways of doing things and one is, so we go to, to Dimension Manager Setup. And the first thing we have to do when we set up this, setup is very, very simple in this. At, once the objects are, are brought in and merged, the only thing you have to do is enable Dimension Management History and then choose if you want to, whether or not you want to automatically uh, uh, do one of these functions. So this is the most restrictive, Enable Posting Date Check. If this is checked, then the program is going to take a look at the user setup table and and uh, uh, look at the posting date range that's set up that's allowed for that user. And it will only allow Dimension Manager to change transactions that are within the posting date of that user. So that obviously means that if uh, if you have a CFO who realizes that it's not going to, what he wants to do is not going to affect anything that, that uh, it shouldn't, then he can expand his posting date range and he can make whatever changes he wants. Now there's nothing that says you have to, to uh, you can take that off and if you, this is not checked, then users will be allowed to update anything they want, any, trans, any posted transaction and for, at any date. We originally put in something that said exclude closed periods but since nav really doesn't do a hard close and closes are really only uh, marked uh, when you when you uh, close for the year we found that this this would prevent people from uh, from making changes in prior years but that's not good enough if you happen to be a public company you've got to make sure that you don't make changes to any data that has been uh, that has been published this field auto purge days <coughs> refers to this dimension management history list in order for to prevent this table from getting too big you can say in in the setup that you want to per no, sorry about that you want to purge the that table after so many days so you're only going to store the number of days you must, maybe you want to store uh, half a year. So in this case, you would enable uh, anything older than 180 days would automatically be purged. Okay, so that's up to you whether you want to use it. It's up to you whether you want to enable a posting date check. It's not required, but it does provide some safety. So I mentioned before about going into the GL entry table. Let's go into the GL entry table and go to posted. Well, we're going to go to departments and financial management, and we're going to go to the general ledger. 
and chart of accounts. And let's see if we can't find an account that has a bunch of transactions, which is usually the um, uh, sales uh, retail domestic. Let's take a look at this. So we go to edit. All right, so there's th this. There's your general ledger for this account, and if you drill into it, you see all of the individual entries. Now, this kind of presented a problem, and if you, this is w one of the areas where we added in the ability to see not only department and project, which is what you'll be able to see in your database, but you can also see all of the extended dimensions as well. When you first implement this, the system, uh, adding in, changing the table doesn't populate this, so we have a one-time uh, utility that will go back in and grab all of the data for the various different uh, transactions to populate the GL entry table with the extended dimensions. That has to be run uh, as part of setup if you want to see this. Now, what happens when you, po when you post transactions in the GL is that it posts with a register entry so that all of the entries in the GL table that are posted at the same time will be linked together. <coughs> this causes a problem. And originally when we built this, we found that if we wanted to change this, the dimensions with this one invoice, we were changing everything else that was in that, in that posted register. So now we've broken that relationship so that we can, if we want to, change dimensions for this entry and this entry and this entry. And we go to dimensions. And there are the dimensions for that for those entries. And if we go to actions, we can either batch change dimensions, which will change these selected entries, or we can change uh, change dimensions. Uh, batch change dimensions is going to um, let's see the the change dimension will change only the dimensions on this uh, on this one entry. If we navigate on it, now batch change will change all of them, but it will only change the, the dimensions for the, the, uh, the GL entry table. If you want to change all of the related entries for this, then you have to go to navigate and navigate will then allow you to change all of the related entries. So you have a choice of updating just the GL entry table, which I've found that a lot of companies, that's what they want to do. If they're drilled into the GL entry table, the only thing they want to do is, is update the, the uh, GL entries and not every, all the related entries. But you can if you want to. You can, by, by navigating on a document, you can update everything or you can change the dimensions of just this one entry or you can change the dimensions for these three entries or you can filter the list and highlight it and change um, of, of a thousand entries at once you don't have to to click on them individually you can you can filter it and then highlight them all and then batch change them so this allows you to be able to go in pretty much and make any corrections that you need to make to clean up your reports. Uh, we had a, a couple other questions that originally came up, and that is, if you're using analysis views, what happens? Analysis views, when they're used, each day when they, when they up, have an update feature and it will add any new transactions to the analysis views, but what it won't do is it will not go back in and, and validate to see if there are any changes in, in the, uh, the data
Bob, I think we lost you. Can you hear me? Bob, we can't hear you, buddy. Hey, Steve, can you hear Bob, or is it just me? Uh, no, I can't hear him either. All right. I'm going to work on it. How about now, Bob? Well, unfortunately, it sounds like Bob's microphone may have failed us. And so, um, so. Wait a minute. Oh, hey, how about this? Okay. Okay, it looks like I've got a mute on my headset that I didn't know I'd hit. <laughs> All right, well, you're back in the saddle. Oh, thank goodness. All right, well, I've, I've gotten through most of the importance. So we were talking about analysis views. Now, analysis views are, are not updated uh, automatically. They, they, will, they will add new information when they're scheduled for update, but they won't uh, look at any changes to existing data in the analysis view. So what we've done is add the ability to go in and delete the analysis, analysis view and rebuild it. So we can go in by analysis view and update it, and this can be scheduled to run uh, on a nightly basis or a, or a, a weekly basis, how, however often you want to run uh, run the the analysis view f update function. But th what it does is it will delete and rebuild the analysis view, and it should probably only be done at night because it usually takes a couple two three hours to run that function. <coughs> So that's pretty much the, the functions of, of Dimension Manager. It's, a, it's an extremely simple tool to use. It requires next to no setup, but it gives you the power to, con to control dimensions and correct issues with reports that you wouldn't ordinarily have. Also gives you the ability to populate existing data, as much existing data as you want, with any new dimensions that you come up with uh, that become important to the company. So I guess at this point, I um, would like to open it up for questions. Great. Just uh, just a couple attendees, so I'm going to take you off mute so that you can ask directly. Uh, I did have one in the chat box here. Uh, Bob, can you talk a little bit about the versions that the product's available for now? We have it available for all versions of NAV as far back as 4.0 SP3. <clears throat> so, um, with all of the current features, so all through 4.0 SP3, 5, 2009, SP1, R2, 2013, 2013, R2, 2015, 16, and I'm showing 2017 today. So, pretty much all versions of, uh, all versions. Great. That's great. And then one more from the chat box. Uh, it, how about pricing information? 
So what we ask, since this is, uh, since we work very closely with our NAV partners, um, I suggest that you get in touch with uh, with your NAV partner, get in touch with Tom, and they will they will uh, quote you the pricing on it. Uh, they can either have us do the uh, object merge, or they can do it themselves, whichever they prefer. But pricing is uh, quoted through your NAV partner. Great. Uh, any other questions for Bob? I've taken everyone off mute, so feel free to speak up, or you can type in the chat window if you like. That complete a job, huh? That's right. Well, <laughs> luckily it's not my first day doing this. That's right. Well, I think we're in good shape, so thanks everyone for attending. Bob, thank you for a great presentation. And just Thank a reminder you, that uh, we will have this recording up on our website so you can share it with anyone who wasn't able to attend. Thanks, everyone.